Well, Moel is a rabbi who does circumcision. This is Rabbi Tzali Wilshansky, and he's going to talk to us. So Hi. what exactly is a circumcision? So a circumcision is a bris. It's Practically speaking, it's the removal of foreskin, um, and that's a practical sense. I studied to do a bris in Israel. Um, when we did it for Jewish children, it was called a brit milah, which is a covenant, the, circ the covenant of the brit. Um, for non-Jewish children, it was called the hasarat orla, removal of foreskin. And uh, what's the Jewish history or significance of this? So it's actually the first Jewish tradition that was there before the Jews became even Jews. Abraham, the first commandment God gave him was to do the Brit Milah. Um, he did it at the age of 99, which must have been a lot more difficult than doing it at the age of eight days. Um, and this is a tradition that we've been doing since then. And it's actually called Brit Avraham Shal Avraham Avinu. It brings us into the covenant of Abraham, our father. Hey, what would you say to the people who say that circumcising a child is barbaric? We're maiming and mutilating the child at this young age when they don't have a choice. What's your answer to that? And as a parent, we have to do what's right and good for the child. As far as the idea of mutilating a child, American pediatricians are of the opinion that it's the proper and right thing to do. We know there are many health benefits. Um, first of all, urinary tract infection is almost zero for children with our who are circumcised. Penis cancer is basically zero for children who are circumcised. As a matter of fact, in America, over 80% of the children are circumcised. Less than 2% of America is Jewish. So the issue is not an issue against Jews, it's against, I guess, American pediatricians. For Jews, however, definitely you have to have a bris because it goes way more than the medical benefits. So I understand that Muslim people also have circumcision, but they're not Jews, so what's the deal with that? So as I mentioned, the mitzvah of circumcision of Brit Milah was given to Abraham when he was at the age of 99. His son, Ishmael, was 13. Traditionally, Ishmael was the father of the Muslims, of the Arab world. So many of them have the tradition as well to do circumcision as part of their religion. I know some of them do it at the age of 13. However, I've seen many that do it at a younger age, um, uh, even infants. Some of them do in the hospital, but they do make sure to have a circumcision as well. Rabbi Wilshansky, you say that a bris, a circumcision, is what binds us and connects us to our heritage and God. But what about women? Are they not connected to God? Our sages tell us that in the merits of the woman, the Nashim Tzitkani is the Jewish people went out of Egypt. And it says in the, in the merit of the Jewish woman, we will be freed. Because women are nemonim. Women have true faith. When we say in our benching, on the bris that you stamped in our bodies, women recite that as well. Because women are naturally gifted with a deeper level of faith. And they are born brist, if you will. So they don't need any extra work done. They are born already complete. Here is something interesting. Circumcision has been practiced in the Jewish tradition for over 3,500 years. About 1903, Dr. Moses was the first one to discover and study the blood, and he was able to discover that eight days after birth is the highest level of nat vitamin K naturally in the body. Vitamin K, of course, causes the body to naturally coagulate if there's a bleed. The safest time to perform a bris is on day eight. He actually writes it that it's impossible it's by chance that Mosaic law, that God knew this and wrote it down for how we practice. We see how God looks out for us.